it's uh, so good to see so many out, so many smiling faces and everyone um, excited to talk about flexible teaching and learning at Brock and I'm personally delighted to offer a few introductory remarks this morning. Um, and I want to give you a little bit of context. This is actually the first, um, what I hope to be annual, presidential symposium on teaching and learning at Brock University, and this is exciting indeed. And I want to thank Jack for the inspiration for this event, because it was a number of months ago that we were talking about e-learning, online learning, and a number of innovative and he said, you know, and it would be really lovely if we had an opportunity to sit down as instructional faculty and staff and talk about uh, our experiences in teaching and learning and talk about our successes in areas that we might improve. And then I said to Jill, you know, Jill, this sounds like um, a wonderful idea. Jill Gross, our director for the Center for Pedagogic Innovation. So we thought, you know, uh, let's go with this. This sounds like a, a really important forum uh, for Brock to, to honor and to mark and to build capacity around. So we toyed with the idea of what, what kind of name we have for this day. And we came up with flexible. And I actually think flexible is sort of a, a lovely term because it can be interpreted as something that's really critical for survival. You have to be flexible and adaptable in order to build resilience. And I think, in fact, that's what we're doing today. We're, we're, we're being flexible. We recognize that many things in teaching and learning can be done many ways. And I think, unlike just like the rock climber on my right, um, that builds strength, it builds core, it builds capacity, it builds foundation. And in this particular time and space in higher education, I think these qualities are critical for both the learner and the teacher. Why now and why is this important today? And what do we hope to gain? For those of us in the profession within post-secondary education, there has never been, in recent memory, a more radical time of change. Government oversight, heightened accountability, fiscal restraint, our changing student demographic, and the exponential impact of technology on our human condition. These forces have dramatically impacted every aspect of higher learning. I would argue, however, that no sector has been more acutely impacted than the landscape of teaching and learning. I call to your attention three recent developments that shape this particular moment in time that we now inhabit. First, Brock University's strategic mandate agreement. Brock University has identified putting students first as one of three fundamental pillars. This priority stimulates us to think creatively about what we teach and how we teach. What we teach means that we may focus on theory and practice as this find expression in experiential education, from work integrated learning to service learning and the full spectrum of experiential learning in between. How we teach means that we may focus on any number of a spectrum of pedagogies, ones that may include online and blended course delivery, as well as considerations of duration and intensity, like ex accelerated courses and our experiment with the spring-summer trimester. The second major piece here is building on her historic strength. It is critical to remember, certainly given our celebratory 50th year observance, that our strategic mandate agreement with the government has simply identified our historic strength of putting students first. We have, since our inception as a university, built upon this bedrock. And more recently, we have begun to forge new ways to reinforce this foundation. Over the last several years, our Center for Pedagogic Innovation and Service Learning Resource Center has launched a series of successful grant initiatives to support our instructional faculty in areas of innovative pedagogy and service learning. Three years ago, we also began enhancement of our spring-summer academic term with a renewed commitment to offer more options for students regarding course selection and mode of pedagogic delivery. Our SMA has simply formalized these initiatives as part of our signature strength and unique identity. The third major piece that is on the horizon and momentarily I'm sure I hear from MTCU about the second call for grants. The government's announcement for the second round of grant incentives will be focused for online course delivery 
This call will entail a major focus on collaboration both within institutions and across institutions of higher learning. It is an initiative designed to assist student mobility and create online networks of collaboration among our universities and colleges in the province. In summary, these three events, our SMA, the institutional steps we have taken to support our historic teaching and learning strengths, and the government incentives designed to enhance student mobility are now aligned and frame the context for this symposium. This is the horizon of possibility we now enter. What do we hope to gain? Today we hope to create a forum to showcase best practices, to share both successes and challenges, to network with one another, to build collegial and institutional capacity, and to thereby better serve our students. To those of you who are sharing your story, we look forward to learning from your experiences. To those of you who are contemplating new initiatives, whatever they might be, I encourage you to listen, engage, consider, and imagine. One thing I know for certain, the future means that we need to build our collective capacity within this institution. We have our mission, we have our beacon, we know the way ahead. But the only way ahead is for us to support one another as we are today. I'm heartened by the number of people who are out this morning. We're planning the day that will be flexible, allowing people to drift in and out <clears throat> as needed. This morning, Julia will walk us through um, the the, f the framework for this morning's activities, which will be focused online in e-learning. And this afternoon, Sandy Howe, who is with our uh, Service Learning Resource Center, will facilitate our service learning efforts. And this I want to make crystal clear. We are engaged in a full spectrum of teaching pedagogies. It is not just one, it is many. The future requires us to be sensitive to diversity, which means we need to be equally compelling in our face-to-face, one-offs with students, as we are in our distance education with students. There is no one way, there are many ways, because that is the only way we, we must recognize the future at Brock around teaching and learning is a whole host of diversity. So once again, I thank you for your attendance today. I know the sacrifice that entails, and I look forward to sharing some wonderful stories with you. Thank you.